I am so excited to be here with Melody Christia. Uh, Melody is the lead singer of Liliac, a heavy metal, hard rock family band uh, with her siblings in the Christie family. Uh, Liliac has received massive attention for their covers of heavy metal classics like Dio's Rainbow in the Dark, Iron Maiden's The Trooper, so many others. They also have their own original material in 2019. They had a six-song EP called Chain of Thorns. Uh, in, in 2020, they had Queen of Hearts, a full-length, a full-length record. Uh, Melody and Liliac are set to begin a summer tour across the U.S. on June 15th. And that's really soon, isn't it? Yes, uh, we're actually leaving on Tuesday morning to start a big tour. I'm very excited. I can't wait. Yeah, like actually right now we started we started all the packing, all the merch and stuff like that. And yeah, so we're very like, we're very working hard. And we, yeah, we're like getting ready. We're very preparing. We're preparing a lot for the show. That's cool. Uh, you know, you guys always work so hard. You do this all yourself, uh, yeah. right down to, you know, these beautiful videos that you have. Uh, those are all done by you. Uh, you know, all your merch, all your designs, uh, your artwork, even, uh, you know, done by you. Uh, that's, it's hard sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's hard because like, you know, like you don't have people there to like especially during the shows like to unpack your stuff and we kind of just like oh we're here and spread your on and go to bed you know we had to like okay we gotta like get there help put it, set up the merch unpack all our instruments start sound check then wait and then come and start the show you know and meet and greets too so yeah we do we do a lot of stuff on our own and not just only touring but also like like i just told you like earlier we started putting all the merch together and then soon we got to put all of our equipment together and put it in the trailer but also on our music like all our video production is done by us by samuel mostly and then um like all our music we all do it together you know we all write our songs together mm-hmm. and my dad he does all the recording and the producing and the managing and we are also um we are also like uh backed up by um big time entertainment with big time entertainment with uh booking shows and stuff like that for us we my dad used to do all the booking but then B- uh, bte uh, hooked us up you know, and they're yeah. like, yeah, I'll go ahead. You know? <laughs> but yeah. yeah, a lot of stuff on our own. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. You know, when I first heard about you guys and I was investigating, you know, what you do, you do more than just your music. That's for sure. Uh, It's it's the whole package with you. Uh, Let's talk about your hair. It's the elephant in the room. Uh, (laughs) And it it looks so great. Uh, It's so different. People know you with the long, brown, black hair. Um, Yeah. And, uh, you know, what? I have a daughter your age, a, a couple of years older, and, you know, she gets her hair done and there's no, you know, it's not under a microscope. She goes and gets her nails done. She can put cupcakes on them. Nobody's going to know the difference. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, you get your hair done. It's a little more, you know, it's, is there a band discussion when you do this, you know, this kind of thing? Uh, it, you know, <laughs> and does that, I mean, um, when I first decided oh, I wanted to cut, because I wanted to grow my hair all the way up to my knees and I made it halfway through my thighs. Uh-huh. So I didn't make it all the way to my knees, but it was like probably a foot away from my knee. And um, I was like, I want to cut it because I had long hair for like 10 years. Mm-hmm. And like I started growing it like ever since I was like, what, 10 years old. And now I'm 20. I cut it when I was 19 before I turned 20. And I'm like, I want to try something different. You know, I, I feel like I need to have that change a little just for myself, not just, oh, everybody look at me. I, I did something different. No, it's just like more like a personal change and like growing and like trying to like, I guess not really find myself because I know myself. It's just, I want to try something Great. different, you know, that's I feel awesome. good about it. And that's I mean, awesome. I yeah. Mean, that's- I mean, <laughs> sorry. No, no, go ahead. And I mean, like, of course, like, sometimes I do miss my long hair. Like, I look back and <laughs> I'm like, oh, my long hair. I used to, like, braid it and stuff like that. I do miss it. But, like, I'm glad the hair's 
you know, you could always grow it back. So, you right. know, well, when I decided to grow it back, I'll grow it back. Yeah, definitely. But I'm just glad to hear that one, you know who you are, you know yourself. And that's, that's such a great thing in life. It really is. And you're not afraid. Uh, You, you want to do you, you felt it was right. And you did it. Uh, You're not worried about, you know, any kind of backlash or that's got a, it's a lot of pressure. Like I say, you know, my daughter does that. There's no, you know, there's nothing said about it at all, really. Yeah. Um, you do it, it's a little bit different. Does that, yeah. that pressure ever, you know, those small things in life that you do and you're under the microscope a little bit? Uh, yeah. Is that tough sometimes? I mean, yeah, like, because, like, I cut my hair and then everybody's like, oh, you went pop. You so <laughs> I'm not going to. I don't know, watch you guys anymore because you cut your hair. I'm like, <laughs> that shouldn't be like an excuse to like not see us anymore, you know? Cause like, you know, at least I didn't shave my head off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, I don't think you lost too many. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. For sure. <laughs> Uh, you were with that voice for sure. Uh, and, and speaking of the voice, uh, do, do you remember the day it was decided that you were the voice of Liliac? You know, your brothers and sisters, they, you know, you all came up together and you know, you all kind of put this band together, your dad and, and you know, d- all d- trying different instruments and, and kind of knowing your place. Uh, you know, how'd that go? Did, uh, you know, uh you know abigail open her mouth and go nope that's not it and then you you know or you know how was it that melody got the job yeah i kind of but well before we started the band we were still into music but we we're doing like a lot of like the 2000s more pop music like you know michael jackson stuff and then like sometimes i did rihanna but i was like nine at the time and uh, our little brothers were just like babies. They're like, what, like three and two, <laughs> you know? Like, so we didn't think, my dad didn't think of band yet. So he just worked with me and Sam because me and Sam could sing. Abby was, couldn't really sing well. <laughs> so yeah, so um, basically it was that. But then once we all started growing up and everybody wanted to like be a part of music, my dad was like, okay, let's make you guys a band. So my dad gave us all instruments and then he magically magically chose the right ones for us because we actually fell in love with it you know awesome. he was saying i'm gonna put sam on lead guitar because you know and i'm gonna make melody sing because you know i i i could i could imitate a lot of singers really well mm-hmm. and especially rock i sounded really good because i had this like thick thicker louder voice you know and then with abby's like you're more like choreographer so i'm gonna make you go on drums <laughs> and then Ruben and Justin, it was kind of funny because dad, my dad was saying like, okay, which one of you guys want to play guitar or keyboards? Justin's like, I don't care. And then Ethan chose guitar. So Justin's like, okay, I'll go on keyboards. <laughs> <laughs> and they're so good. I mean, they're, yeah. they're just, you know, I mean, Justin is just, he's fantastic. And, you know, he just fell right into that. And, you know, I mean, it's like he's been playing for years and he loves to do it. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, Ethan ended up on bass. You were playing bass yeah. at first. Uh, and, and, you know, his guitar uh, lessons and you teaching him the parts, uh, you know, he's he's fit right into it, too. It's it's just amazing how well each of you accept your roles and play those roles. Yeah. And, you know, your original music is fantastic. Uh, I'm so looking forward to it. Uh, more of it for sure. Um, now, the writing process for you guys. You're all under the same roof. Uh, you're all siblings. That means you've got to fight a little bit, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> how does the writing process work for you guys? And is it an advantage or an, a disadvantage sometimes to to be all together so close? I say it's more of an advantage than a disadvantage because then, you, you know, since you're always around each other, you're like, oh, I randomly, let's put a song together instead of like, having everybody drive in and it's like oh i can't come this day can i do it another day and stuff like that so obviously it's a lot better because we just go down in our basement and like here's something let's do this at the beginning it first started with sam coming up with most of like the riffs and then we would build off of that but nowadays it's like each one of us has a different idea and we just pull it to the table and then we all work together and jam at the same time now since we're at the basement back then it used to be like piece by piece but now it's like we all kind of jam together. So I really like it now 
because then you can put all ideas at once together instead of just like wait let me think about it you know right and i think that's that is unusual for bands now you know most of the bands i'm talking to they're doing it over zoom or they're doing it you know sharing files of what they you know ideas that they have yeah. and, like and i would that. say that's a lot harder because it's like yeah for if like doing over the camera is like you can't really hear it and then when you jam it together it's like that's not what i played and I'm like right. well that's what i heard over the camera <laughs> Yeah. Right, right. And you know, there's something I think there's a chemistry, uh, there's something something magical happens when a band is together in a room. Exactly. Uh, it's really, you know, playing off of each other and really getting that that because you can feel it like off of each other and like get you can oh yeah, I feel your energy and it's going into my playing, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. a lot more exciting, you know, it makes you want to write a song instead of like, oh, you sent me another idea, let me listen. Yeah. <laughs> right like, right oh, yeah, let's do it you know? yeah that's great that's great um now you know I, I look at you how young you guys are and uh yeah i think about life you know my life uh you know things change things yeah. happen you know you, you your your yeah. ideals change uh your life changes in so many different ways different paths do you ever worry about things changing, you know, spouses or, you know, uh, moving away or uh, anything like that, you know, or just maybe losing interest, one person uh, losing interest? Do you ever, ever worry about things like that? I mean, like, um, we definitely have changed when we moved from California to Georgia, but it was for the better. And if we do go through changes like that, I feel like we would understand and it's better for us to be happy than instead of like arguing like, oh, why, why this, why that, you know, mm -hmm. you know, but I understand and there's always ways to work around it and, you know, get what you need and want for that situation. So, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, I would be ready, you know, uh, it's <laughs> like I wouldn't worry. I mean, I would be like sad or worry, but like. Right. I'm pretty sure it will be more acceptable and like understanding towards the end of the day. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, could you have someone that isn't family in the band? Uh, you know, would that, uh, you know, do you ever, do you ever think about that? Yeah. That, I feel like that would be a lot different because especially yeah. like they're not around all the time and you're like, Hey, can you come over? <laughs> you know? they're right. like, uh, okay. And they ha you have to wait like a whole hour until they get here. <laughs> right Two seconds, you know yeah and yeah. Uh, you know it is a it's a family band you're such a wonderful family uh aside from the music you know you you guys obviously you you love each other you enjoy each yes. other's time together uh you know i've heard you talk about things you do while you're touring and on the road and you have fun and uh it's just great to hear even with that you know age difference you guys are so close uh and you know with your dad and your mom and dad too uh just it, it's it's yeah. great to see uh as a dad myself uh it, it i love seeing that i, I love yes. that. it's and, a lot of fun i yeah. love it that our family is all together on this i feel like it's a lot easier too it mm -hmm. could be harder and but easier at the same time like harder because we're like all independent we're trying to do so much at once as a family but it's fun doing it together because you know you trust these people you know hey they're my family i trust them i wouldn't trust anybody else you know yeah yeah and that's uh that's that's a big thing in in in, in the music business uh yeah you have to be careful as you know uh <laughs> Uh, you watch that deal that you signed uh, and you, you have that with, with family. You don't have to worry about that so much. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your art. Uh, you know, you are, I mean, you have some, some things for sale uh, yeah. on website. You paint and you, you don't just paint, you paint, uh, <laughs> you paint like you sing. Uh, you really, really do it. Well, it's beautiful. Uh, and it's and it's deep and it's uh, you know it, it, it's captivating. Um, what inspires the subject matter of your art? Is it like your music? Uh, you're inspired in the same ways. And what kind of training have you had? Um, on painting, I was self-taught in YouTube. I guess you know, like if I can't, oh, I don't know how to do this kind of shading. I would love on YouTube, but like 
Uh, I guess like when I was young, I always would doodle. But then like when I turned 13, I was like, mom, for Christmas, can you buy me paint and canvases and an easel and this and that? And then, so I finally got what I wanted. And I did my first painting, obviously, when I look back, it's like, oh, that's a terrible painting. But yeah, definitely like throughout the years, I did get better on my own. And like, like you know, sometimes I search up on my oh, wait, you know, but yeah, I, um, yeah, the way I paint sometimes half of it is like, I see something online. I'm like, Ooh, I'm, I like that idea. I'm going to do that idea, but different, you know, and then mix it all around. But then sometimes I do paint like what I feel or like anything that just crosses or pops up in my mind. I'm like, Oh, I should paint that. It's the same thing like music. Like, Oh, something pops in my head. I need should, I need to like write a lyric or write, or, like find it on a bass or a guitar. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's so good. Uh, yeah, it, it, self-taught is is. I don't know how you do it. It's crazy. Uh, yeah. you know, without any formal training, very very nice. Uh, Thank you. Please check it out. Go to the website. See yeah. what is art. Uh, yes, I'm gonna put a lot of more paintings on sale before we leave on this tour. Great. And I'd say there's probably up to like six to ten. Hopefully, I'm going to try to reach 10 before we leave. Yeah. But yeah. Nice. Do you get a chance to paint a lot? I mean, are, are you, you know, because with music and everything else and preparing for tours, you, you have a busy life. Uh, yeah. you know, how much do you paint? How often? I usually, um, I usually typically do more music than painting, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it's only whenever I'm free or if I don't have anything to do, like if I'm like, you know, our, our day is over and like, I still have a couple of hours before bed. I paint, I start on the project and then throughout the week, I like, like little hours like that I have, I, you know, go and finish it. That's... So yeah, I would say like, I would paint up to like three times a week, you know, very nice for like a couple of hours. So yeah. Excellent. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, I, I want to read a quote for you. I found it on a, a video, a YouTube video of, of you guys live. Um, I'm 57 years old and have been a metal fan for over, uh, over 40 of those years. Melody is the only singer whose voice just reaches deep into my heart and draws out my emotions like only one other singer did ever did. Ronnie James Dio. Oh, I knew it. I'm like, <laughs> it has to be Ronnie James Dio. And this person yeah. said, I cried like a child the day Dio died, and I wept with joy the first time I heard Melody. Oh. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, I, I read that, and I can relate with that so much. And I think, you know, and he says he's 57, and I'm 53. Uh, my age group really can relate with that exactly when when i heard you and the depth of your voice and the control uh it was so powerful to me uh for you to do deal which is a kind of a a no fly zone uh and somebody your age and and female uh yeah. you know to to get that kind of strength and depth and power uh that he had and you nail it every single time. Uh, it was, it brought me to tears. I was, you know, it was oh. chilling, absolutely chilling. And I think there's so many of us that get that. Um, yeah, it's got to make you feel great for one thing, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I definitely, Ronnie Jim Steele was my main inspiration. I discovered him when I was 15 years old. Like, surprisingly, that was like, well, only five years ago. Mm -hmm. you know but like I don't know something to him stood out and it just like I would listen to his music and albums every single day over and over and over while I'm painting or when I'm doing stuff because I'm like I want to sound just like him you know <laughs> and I think it really really paid off well because like first of all I I love my voice but I have obviously I love Ronnie's better than mine but like <laughs> I, you know I get very inspired by him a lot on his voice and performances. I love his moves that he does and stuff like that. I watched a lot of his interviews. Sometimes I cry by hearing his voice. I'm like, oh, you know, but um, 
Yeah, it definitely makes me happy that people really see that, like, oh, there's a part of Ronnie James Dio left and still alive somehow, you know? Yes, yes. And it also gave me a lot of chances. Like, if I met with Vinny Apathy, the drummer of Dio, and I got to play with him. Like, I was, like, in Ronnie's spotlight, and I'm like, oh. Yeah. And Vinny is so sweet. Like, one time my dad went on call him, and I was like, hi, Vinny. He's like, hello to my favorite singer in the world and I was uh, like, oh. that is yeah, it feels cool like like when i perform with him i'm like i feel like i'm in ronnie's uh shoes yeah. like yeah. you know how cool is wow. that that is pretty amazing uh, I, boy i would love to see or hear that uh that, <laughs> that's incredible yeah that would be great um it, you know it's an older crowd that you guys get um yeah you know we love what you're doing uh, you know but it's an older crowd you, you, younger kids uh, i say kids uh your age uh younger people 20s aren't so much into into the classic metal sound uh there are a few um you first of all are you comfortable with that older crowd uh and do, do you ever think about trying to reach a crowd more your age well yeah yeah obviously i mean okay. i love a fan as a fan no matter how old or whatever they are you know but like um definitely it would be nice to get the younger generations because like we're we're younger generations and then soon off we get older a lot of our older fans are gonna kind of go and i'm yeah. like we have no fans <laughs> left because they all left <laughs> us you know but uh, but i love them for supporting us and on everything but yeah we're definitely trying to get for the younger crowd you know we're trying to be more ourselves and open to like you know what other people like and try to include that into our music without changing it like completely you know we right. just added to like put a little flavor on it from now generation but it's not changing our music we're still liliac we still do me metal no matter what you know right. but we're doing something that you know gives favor for both the older crowd and the younger crowd oh that's awesome that's good to hear yeah. uh, you know uh, I, i'm we're all anxious to hear other things now you put out queen of hearts in 2020 uh yes. the, the year that time forgot or wants to forget yeah <laughs> not a great year uh you know with the pandemic and everything you really didn't get a chance to promote that properly or tour on that um yeah. will are you writing uh consistently now do you have new music and will oh, we get new oh, music yeah. soon <laughs> yeah. of course you are right on this new tour <laughs> you guys are gonna hear a few of our new original songs that we're planning to put on to the next album we are creating and developing you know we're at the point where we have a lot of songs but it's just like it's like not like they're good songs right but we don't feel it like like some of these songs we feel like they should be on the album and some of these songs we can't put them on the album and then we have to keep writing new ones but recently we've been writing a lot of new songs that I think and hope they're hit potential, but you'll definitely hear them at our shows. So if you ever do come to our show this year during the summer, you will hear some of our new materials. Awesome. Oh, that is great to hear uh, for sure. Uh, and that, that tour is starting up really soon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You are hitting the road. Um if you could sit down and talk with any living person, who would that be? Oh, living person? Dead yeah. doesn't count. Yeah, no, we're not going to give you a deal. That's too easy. Uh, <laughs> uh, if you could sit and have a conversation with anybody you wanted, who, who would that be? Well, I already had one with Vinny Apathy, so does that count? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll okay. I would go for maybe Tony Wyoming, Geezer Butler. <laughs> Yes. Okay, I maybe I can have a, a little chat with Ozzy. Uh, oh, but Jimmy Bean is dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Vivian Campbell. Yes. Yeah. Wow, that would be cool but, too. Yeah. But if you're talking about like more pop, like way more popular, I'm probably like James Hetfield or, or um, what's it, uh, Megadeth, uh, uh, Dave Mustaine. Yeah, Dave Mustaine. I was thinking David Lee Roth. I'm like, no, that's Ben Hayden. <laughs> but yeah, um, 
definitely a lot of the oh oh i mean have you heard of greta van fleet yes yeah i love i love josh kishka i love his voice yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, it's. So, I, would you know, definitely, I definitely would want to have a chat with him. It's like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, you. I mean, you got. You're gonna be. Uh, you're, you're gonna be seeing all those people on the road. I, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, I, hopefully. You know, soon. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, Ooh, also, Stephen Tyler. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What a classic. What a Stephen what a Tyler. voice. Definitely. Um, was there something that could, when you guys first, cause you were busking on Santa Monica pier for a long time, uh, yeah. and you play together, you have amps, you, you know, you, there's a certain way that you hear things when you step out on a stage and have, you know, a, a, a soundboard and a PA and it's different. I, uh, you know, hearing things are different and things like that. Was there anything when you started touring in, in clubs and, and, you know, arenas, things like that. Um, was there anything that caught you by surprise that, you know, was uh, challenging for you? Oh yes, definitely. Definitely the sound because like in Santa Monica, we would just have speakers and we'll run everything through the speakers. And of course the guitars on little amps and the drum by itself, but like my voice and like uh, the keyboard would, and would go through like these um, Yamaha speakers. We still have them. We have them downstairs and I use them as monitors when I'm rehearsing with the band, but on stage I use in-ears. So definitely trends positioning to the in years was a huge challenge because I did hear myself different and I wasn't confident in my voice because now I could hear all my mistakes that I do live you know right. back in Santa Monica here like all of the sound would just go out into like the open area because it wasn't closed off you know right. but then when you listen to yourself I'm like oh dang I sound terrible I sound out of tune I didn't sing this part right I'm forcing my voice now you know Right. Like it, it's a it, that was the biggest challenge, but definitely since then I definitely like learned a lot and progressed a lot in that that I I can't go without in years because if I go without in years I'm scared that I would just like blow off my voice because the in years help me hear myself where I can control my voice right. into the microphone you know because the speakers make you loud yeah. you know yeah. I don't necessarily sing loud right but yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, that's and that's uh, that's a huge thing. Uh, that transition from you know playing and even you know in basements and things that are you know in street in the street and then going to a you know a, a soundboard and a PA and monitors is uh, is a complicated thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is there a dream place or a venue for you? You know, you guys did the Kiss Cruise, uh, you know, a couple of years back, right? Uh, that yeah. was just really cool that's a dream of mine to to be on that uh and and see that so that had to be pretty cool is there a place that is in your mind uh that you want to go play uh you've always wanted to play well always wanted to play because i've always been to that um venue all the time is the forum in los angeles i i always go there to see concerts and i'm like i can't wait till i perform on that stage or the staples staples was a lot bigger and a lot more people i feel like that's really cool my first concert i've ever seen was at staples oh we saw muse it was uh it was a mind-blowing show they had so many effects and things flying in the air i was like wow that's so cool i want our shows to be like that. <laughs> hey uh, it's only a matter of time really yeah, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> it really is and you work so hard and it will be so deserved when it comes i can't yeah. wait to see it for sure Me too. Uh, yeah it's pretty great you know i thought uh you know you're you're being um of uh, romanian descent and your dad being from transylvania right by transylvania and dracula's castle yeah. i thought wouldn't it be cool if you could like play Dracula's castle? Wouldn't that be cool? That'd um, be cool. <laughs> or you get to shoot a music video there. Yeah. That would be that, really cool. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, you gotta work on that for me. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of big concert say, Hey, I am the vampire. You should give me this for free. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh that'd be really cool and something to look forward to along with that new music and you're gonna be on the road playing a few of those uh you're coming by me june 17th and i will that's very close yeah it is and you're playing the arcada theater which you're gonna love it's a beautiful venue uh you're playing with one of my favorite people in the world too uh brit lightning a, a close personal friend of mine she's a so sweet uh so yeah it, it's gonna be a great time i'm looking so forward to seeing you and to see you then yeah yeah it's fantastic be well i will see you then and uh you know we are all looking forward to everything you have going on and uh thank it, you you too yes and rock on rock hard rock hard <laughs> all right thanks so much melody take care thank you all right bye bye, bye.